but they certainly knew where they stood after their 14-13 victory over Tulane in the Sugar Bowl. A&M's offense was led, of course, by John Kimbrell, who scored here on a two-yard dive and later scored the Aggies' other touchdown to win the game. The 210-pound fullback and two-time All-American did things no other running back had been able to do before at A&M, yet he rarely asked for the spotlight. John Remember College Station, the afternoon of October 20, A&M plays TCU in some of the wildest weather and football record. TCU has just taken over on an Aggie fumble and moves with Jim Swink. Here he comes, wide around his own right side in the rain and the mud, and down he goes. But believe me, those 11 yards, he says, were worth that mud bath. Now just six yards out, Chuck Curtis fades fast for the pitch. O'Day Williams makes his catch in the end zone, a touchdown. Point fails, it's TCU, six to nothing. And so it was in the fourth quarter, the Aggies move on their own 20-yard line. First down, 80 yards away from the froggy goal line. John Crow sets this long march in motion with his 21-yard grind. And here the cadets begin to catch on fire. They eat the yards in big bites as Don Watson goes to the other side. Look at those Aggies block, and when Watson is overhauled on this 37-yard scamper, a and is deep in froggy territory. And this was the day they said the drought might be broken. From the 19-yard line, then, it is Roddy Osmond to get off the pass in the nick of time. John Crow takes the pitch at top speed. This one gobbles up 11 more yards on a first down on TCU's four-yard line. Then Osmond decides to keep pitching that slippery pig hide. This time he pitches out to Don Watson. Don calls for a running pass to his left. Perfect timing as John Crow makes the catch for the tying touchdown. Six to six. And here was the difference. Lloyd Taylor takes aim. This kick is two to the uprights, and that settled a thrilling game. A&M seven, TCU six.
can build to a win. A sold out Kyle Field. They are looking to maroon out the number two team in the country, the highest ranked club that's been in here in 15 years. A battle of Frank Solich and R.C. Slocum as North meets South in a Big 12 battle. I got Nebraska. Bobby Newcomb has a look. Third down. Kavika, the up man. Newcomb going to keep it, and he's going to go down. Nice job defensively by Holdman again. Warwick Holdman originally began his career as an inside linebacker. Moved outside to what you know most people who followed Aggie football would know as the Reggie Brown spot, the speed spot in this defense. Great pursuit inside, and boy, I'll tell you, Bobby Newcomb doesn't seem to me to have that explosiveness that he had earlier in the year. He he looks to me to be about 75% right now. There's Holdman's numbers. You can see five tackles for loss, including that one that's brought up a fourth down and two, and Nebraska will go for it. They're three out of four on fourth down conversions this year. The late pitch to Evans. Hit in the backfield, and down he goes. Brandon Jennings with a huge hit from the secondary. Well, wow. it's not like AM has never seen option football. The Southwest Conference for years was the home of option football. And you can tell R.C. Slocum and Mike Hankowitz, who has faced Nebraska 15 times in his career, is ready for the offense. Stopped by Bradley, the end man on the Ice line of scrimmage number 40. Here too, but more than likely a safe one. Third and 25. Nebraska, but maybe. Who knows? Randy McCown, you said you're not expecting a lot of big plays and great throws. Well, so far he's thrown three of them. Two have been great ones. Picture perfect. So far, the Aggies not intimidated at all by Nebraska. From the 24, Newcomb hit from behind. Royland Bradley, the other outside linebacker, gets it. Royland Bradley shifts to the ball with us yesterday and said he's going to start. I don't know how good he'll be. All right. Third down in the yard. Nebraska trails by a touchdown. Second man is Evans, and he's dumped again. Jay Brooks came flying around from the outside. That win from the inside. That play seems so slow. Know, but they've got their hands full today. Tied at seven here in Aggie Land at Kyle Field. Third and a couple. Newcomb hit and dropped at the 50. Lonnie Madison made the stop. Well, a &M's deep. Third down and two. Let's see if AM can rev something up here offensively. First man. Ball for Toombs. Can the fullback take it? Toombs. about 271. 
man. And he runs, not like a 271 pound guy, I'll tell you that. Nebraska was caught gambling. You think these coaches don't stay late at night for some reason? This time they had a feeling that this type of play would look. Look at that hole. Nebraska had their linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage trying to draw the blocks. And when Toombs got the ball, he didn't look like anything but a tailback with the ball as he was just galloping towards the end zone. They call him Big Rumble. He's rumbled to the one. Now it's Hall. When you're 270 pounds, held the 38 first half rushing yards, and they're still sputtering a little bit on offense. Now Newcomb off play action, wanted to go deep. Scrambles, and he's going to go down. The wrecking crew gets to him. Cornelius Anthony, the first man there. Good coverage in the secondary, and an even better delay. Not able to get the ball to him. The two big plays today for AM. A 71-yard run by their fullback that got him close and an 81-yard touchdown pass. And now the defense going to work. Warwick Holdman. And they get to Newcomb on back-to-back -back plays. Bobby Newcomb has been struggling with that leg. He does not have that explosive speed. He's been throwing okay throughout the game. But when people are not open right away, this is not a sophisticated pass offense for Nebraska. He's got one guy to throw to. He's not there. It's a sack. The wrecking crew is making a wreck of this Nebraska offense. Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator, has done a marvelous job with his troops. And now it's third down and 19. Newcomb from the gun. And under the gun. And dropped again. And the ball is loose. Texas a and Touchdown. You never figure you're going to kiss when your defense is out there. You're not even ready for that. And all of a sudden, a sack says, put the chapstick. At the 11-yard line, there's the tackle numbers on that win in his career. Agavica doesn't want to go down. He goes down short of the first down, though, and it's decision time for Frank Solich because no, it's fourth and two. Right, I don't think there's any decision. I think you've got to kick the field goal. Still a lot of time left in this game. Gonna run the ball right at that win this time inside. You know, the reason Dad is so good is sometimes he takes the play on, other times he dodges. He never gives that offensive lineman the same look two plays in a row. Mask is gonna go for it here. There's the decision. Fearless Frank. 0 and 1 today, but 3 for 5 on the season on fourth down conversions. They're gonna have to earn it. It's about two yards left. And around coming to Wiggins. Hit in the backfield and drops. Jason Webster stayed home and made the play. How many times do you see a reverse on fourth and one? Here's Webster. He's coming off the corner. Remember on the short yardage situation earlier when Brooks made the tackle coming around the corner? This time Webster stays at home with the backside blitz. In there at the tailback spot. McCown scrambles around, found an opening, he's got a first down, inside the 20, McCown, first and goal, Texas a and Chris Taylor made a big play, Jamar Toombs, they must force a field goal here. Paul, a tailback. Two tight ends set, both Spiller and Campbell in there. On a third and goal. Straight up the middle. Touchdown! The big rumble 
goes over for the score. Been so much kissing going on, you're going to want to switch seats around here. <laughs> you called the two plays, still plenty of time. It's yardage now, not the clock that's a factor. Newcomb, all day to throw, deep. Intercepted, picked off by Cedric Curry. And the Aggies are going to stop the longest winning streak in college football. And we'll have a new national champion as well, more than likely. Bobby Newcomb is saying that Billy Hafke, you said it, he has not had his receivers out there, no experience. A seldom used receiver didn't stop in the zone. See it, how he overran the zone? Newcomb threw exactly where he wanted to. Here's the opening right there. Watch the receiver overrun it. You're open, you're open. Stop, son. There it is. He overran the zone. The ball had to be thrown to a spot. And there's the big pickoff by Seth. The fans can't wait to erupt one more time. They'll get their chance here in about a half minute. And this will change everything for that ball championship series. As you mentioned, I don't think there's any way Nebraska can climb their way back up and get into the Fiesta Bowl. Time for R.C. to get a shower. <laughs> and that's probably the best ice he's ever felt down the back of his neck. Dent Wynn is the guy that got him. Dent finally made his big play. <laughs> is a big upset. AM shocks number two Nebraska. First loss suffered by Frank Solich. As Gary said, probably RC Slocum's biggest win ever. week long Texas A&M staff has told us this year our guys are not intimidated by Nebraska like they were last December in San Antonio and boy were they right well after you play Florida State and UCLA and Nebraska in the past you just step up or you find a new job and the A&M players said hey we can compete against these guys they matched Nebraska's initial intensity they focused on the game. They beat Nebraska at their own game. The Chevrolet most valuable players of this one. And there could have been a bunch picked for Texas A&M. We chose the big fullback, the big rumble, Jamar Toombs. Matt Davison, a huge game in his first start at wide receiver for Nebraska. A Chevrolet donation will be made to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter century. It's been almost a quarter century since the home of the 12th man has felt this good about this big a win. The final score, the Aggies of Texas A&M, 28. Weekend to make a stand today at the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Kansas State quarterback Michael Bishop may be the best one-man show in college football. With the pass or the Bishop can checkmate you with the run. Texas A&M stands in the way of Kansas State's title drive. The wrecking crew is ready to steal away any hopes of a national championship. live at the famous arch alongside the mighty Mississippi in St. Louis. Today in the Trans World Dome, more than 65,000 will watch the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. The unbeaten Wildcats of Kansas State taking on Texas A&M. And the BCS computer standings underline the importance. K-State must climb to one or two to make the title bowl. Two other unbeatens are in the... Here's Bishop, short drop, now he pulls back deeper, waiting for someone to clear, lock it well covered, back to the other side, doing fumble, loose ball, Aggies got it! 
Recovered at the 23-yard line by Jason Webster, number 39. Justin Swift turns it over. And Warwick holds it. Brinkley a wide out. They're going to run Parker. Cuts back home to the hole. Got a 20. Got the speed. 15 from behind at the 9-yard line. Butler saving a touchdown. The long snapper. And the Aggies are on the scoreboard. 11 minutes to go. And meanwhile, what about UCLA and Miami? John Saunders. Two to set in front. So out of the doghouse comes Chris Cole to make. Dante Hall, first down, beautifully on that cutback, explodes, and he rolls close to the five yard line. The one on the field, and now quickly sprinting off is Seth McKinney. And Bynum is two of two. So again, the Aggies threaten. But K-State's talented defense holds in their poll. The Riders have them number two. UCLA beaten today. Tennessee to play against Mississippi State tonight. And Florida State hoping for still another upset. Bishop fires intercepted. Picked up by Datwin, who dropped back his own coverage. And the great linebacker is out of bounds and saves the moment for the Aggies. Datwin, one of the great effort youngsters to ever come along in this sport. Pick up a first down. K-State's cheering section making as much noise as they possibly can. Straight ahead into the end zone for the Aggies. Touchdown! Jamar Toombs. Remember the name for number 28. Down and two for Kansas State. And quarterback Michael Bishop. Snaps it off to Lockett. And Lockett is tackled short of the first down. Cedric Curry came off that corner with a five against Brandon Stewart. Both of the cornerbacks, tight defense. They go one on one, wide open as one slips, and there's Taylor. And it is Cooper who saves the touchdown. He comes off the angle from his safety position as Neesman slipped on the coverage. Stewart, pump fake, back down to the middle and got Taylor again. Now, Taylor has been their big-time receiver today. That's a first down. Down and 10. Brandon Stewart going right side. High, got it. Touchdown. Texas A&M. Leroy Hodge, the junior flanker, 13 yards for the score. And his first catch of the game is a big one for A&M. Well, you got to get lucky sometimes, too. Watch the two wide receivers here. The ball is going to bounce out of the hands of Taylor, number 42, right here. Freeze it right there. Goes right over the top. Lockett comes in motion, and Bishop will take it back. Step up. Can he run for the 10? No. Down at the 39-yard line. Bradley. Try to get a first down and run the clock out if you can. Yeah. But here is your play for the Aggies now. Looking at a third and six. They've got a timeout left. They want the ball back. Want to force the punt. Bishop will try to run for it. Bishop. The ball. It is a first down. Aggies have got it. Bishop fumbles. Cornelius Anthony wraps it up. Again, watch the way the ball is, where Bishop is carrying the ball. He's on the draw play. There's Anthony. He misses him there. Here comes the shot from the side by Holtman, 43. And now Cornelius Anthony with his fourth fumble recovery of the year. Brings it back 15 yards all the way to midfield. First down for the Aggies. Stewart got one on one. Goes low. Caught. At the 14-yard line, Matt Bumgarner makes it. Version on top of it. And here is your third and five from the nine-yard line. Yeah. 
short drop, got Parker, slant, got it, touchdown! Two points away from a tie at the 105 mark of regulation. That was the same play they tried to make on the last two-point conversion try when Parker was stopped on the goal line by Lamar Chapman. This time he gets inside of the strong safety, Gerard Cooper, and gets in for the score. So as you might expect, Texas A&M uses a timeout, and half the coaching staff greets the Hodges in the slot, and now Parker will join him in motion. Stewart's got him in, he's got him. It's tied with 105 to go. Then we head to overtime, unless. Here's Bishop. Sprinting out of trouble, gonna throw it deep down the middle. Got his receivers clustered. Jump ball, loose cut, but over. Cut short of the goal line, but the game ends. As and Bynum puts three on the board. Kansas State gets the ball. We'll take a break to the left side of the offensive formation. Bishop runs in that direction, and the door closes. He's short of the first down, and let's see now if Gramatica is called on to send this into a second overtime. And here comes third down and 17. Stewart has slot to his left. Using Parker in motion, and Butler takes him. They'll look for Parker on a quick hit. And ladies and gentlemen, it was close down there in the corner. He was reaching for the pylon as they were pushing him out. As Texas A&M storms into the Nokia Sugar Bowl or the FedEx Orange Bowl. How do you like that? Jack Aroo. Well, Coach, can you describe the disappointment right now? No, I really can't. I'm tremendously disappointed. All We're, of our players are as well. What about the character of this game? I mean, do you see one thing that maybe cost you, cost you the win? Oh, I, I see a lot of things that like what? us from being able to win the ball game on both sides of the ball. Like what, Coach? Just a, a lot of things that we'll address with our football team. Brent. Well, Jack, one of the things he must address, the number of penalties, especially in the second half. Heartbreak. And here we are. Sir Parker slips out, Dan. And he's on Jeremetrius Butler on the outside. Parker has caught three passes today for two touchdowns and a two-point conversion. Great job. Look at the effort. Was he in? That is so close in the corner. If he got it, it was the elbow that got the pylon. He is being backed up. Ago, you played a rivalry game and you lost, but you said what was most important was the Big 12 championship. Well, I said these kids have great character and great hearts, and they showed it again today. I'm so proud of them. When it got down to the final moments of regulation, the decision that you made, it turned out to be the right one. Well, you just have to play the percentages. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not. We're fortunate they're right today. Go celebrate. We're going to. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Texas A&M. But Dan Fouts, I want to see this down in the corner. Let's start with the all 22 on this. Well, here's Parker against the corner on the outside. Great speed to get by Butler. This is really a question, though. He stiff arms Chapman there. And they must have said that the ball broke the plane before his right leg is out of bounds. Here it is Watch one more now time. The right leg. And the elbow hits the pylon. But which came first? 
Out of bounds or the pylon? You be the official. I think he was out of bounds, but they still would have had a first and goal for a one yard line. Let's put it in perspective. Even if it was a bad call, it would have been first and goal for Texas A&M. When I saw it live, I didn't think there was any chance he was in the end zone. The official who made the call was backing up on the play. And there are our players of this double overtime heartbreaker for Kansas State. The winning touchdown, Sir Parker slips out. The Aggies get the call, and it's Heartbreak Hotel for Kansas State. So long, everybody. Almost every year of this great rivalry, at least one of these two teams is ranked, and oftentimes both clubs are ranked. Texas comes in with a record of 9-2 and two ranked. Number six in the country, Texas A&M, seven and three, and ranked 20th. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Dean Blevins. Glad to have you along. And Dean's sideline is like caged lions. They are ready to go. There is so much emotion. And all of a sudden here, this big crowd of 85,000 is ready to play football. I think this will be a great diversion as to what's taking place. Let's go back upstairs. Texas A&M has won the toss, and the Aggies deferred. So Texas will receive the opening kick. Sims changing the play. Aggie showing blitz. Five-step drop. Pressure comes. Throw into the corner. Incomplete. It was intended for Kwame Cavill. Two-yard field goal attempt by Chris Stockton. And he's a good one. He's at 20 it's gone. 28. It's gone. Strong leg. And it hit the post. place is electric. Play action, looking deep, has a man. Is the catch made? Yes. Chris Cole with a terrific catch and a first down for the Aggies. 31 yards. And into Texas territory. Broken play. Sims in trouble as the agile goes down at the 11. Let's take you down to Chip Parker. And you have good field position. Hard of it in tombs. The big guy's in the backfield. Straight ahead. No fair dodging. Bingo. First down and more. Hey, Coach, that's not dodging right there. Tiki Hardiman. That's coming right down the pipe. A gain of 11. Now, I say right now. And normally, you see a little bit of a tiring effect. Like a hammer and chisel. Here's the pass to Cole. Cole's loose. Cole to the 10. Inside the 5. like Houdini. Well, it was a great job of game planning. Tubes. He's close. Touchdown, Texas A&M. The whole stadium is rocking. Football. It was power football on the fourth down call when they decide to go for it. And here's a look at power football with number 20. Watch the fullback do his job. DeAndre Hardeman bumps his man aside, and then you have a big old hoss in Tombs barreling into the end zone. They are letting it all out here today. Second down and 11 for the Longhorns. Again, the quick toss. Intercepted. Brian Gamble inside the 45. With the interception, and Texas A&M has great field position. Texas got what it wanted on the alignment. They go backside to Montreal. A lot of the times it boils down to sheer execution. And at this point of the game, the defense for Texas is executing much better than the offense for A&M. 
Was this ball touched? Recovered by AM. We'll find out if it's touched. It was. Texas AM football. Jason Webster with a recovery. And Mac Brown. Johnson and Johnson makes a catch inside the 20. Long two. Here's Toons. Breaks a tackle inside the five. Jamal Toons. Touchdown Aggies. Texas A&M behind Toon's nine-yard run climbs back into this ball game. And low. The pressure comes, almost picked off. Oh, what a dangerous pass. Jason Webster got a hand on it first. Texas A&M trails by three. They need a yard and a half for a first down. It is fourth down Aggies, and they're going for it. You've got to be a 57-yard field goal attempt. Here's Toons. He'll be close. He's it got looks it, like he's got it. Aggies trail by three. Second down and nine. Oh, he's to the got it. It's complete to Cole. They'll mark it at the 13. It's a gain of 24 yards. A lot of people say, well, why do you always throw that fade route? You don't ever complete it. To come back and win this one. They want him to have to work for it. Second down and 11. Oh, the oh. count to the corner. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Matt Bumgarner. McCown throws a strike to Bumgardner, and it's a touchdown, Aggies. One, two, three, throw. Throws it on time. Perfectly thrown ball. Almost a little push off there, but you can't call that. Good no call, and Bump Bumgardner is in perfect position, and his height helped him once again as we just talked about the height advantage. Shane Leckler splits the sticks. And the Aggies have taken the lead with 5.02 left in the ball game. Well, you have a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. They trail by four. 30 seconds left. Applewhite is sacked. Ball's loose. Brooks forced the fumble. And they're still wrestling at the bottom of the pile. A&M thinks they have it. This is the game. It is over. Aggies have got it. Jay Brooks, 21, comes on a corner blitz right there. No one picks him up. He slaps the ball. Major Applewhite tries to get on it, but this day is meant for the Aggies. The stadium has the buzz to it that you rarely 
experience. Amazing feeling in this stadium right now. As I look around the stands in front of us, there are tears, there are jubilation. Unbelievable. Team from Texas A&M, diagnosed or die, the uh, Ray Gore, the A&M quarterback coach, was diagnosed with Luke Gehrig's disease. Then the 12th dead. I mean, it's just been an incredible year, an incredible upset here by Texas A&M today over the University of Texas. They've never had a sweeter victory than this. And Texas A&M 20, the Longhorns of Texas 16. Downstairs to Chip Tarkington. Congratulations. Can you, can you put it into words, this win? Well, it's been an emotional week here for everybody associated with the A&M family. We've got strong people involved in this universe and our Aggie family, and they all pulled together today, and we pulled this thing off. It's a great credit to the spirit of Aggie Land. What in the world did you say at halftime? I felt like halftime that we should have been we should have been ahead of the ball game at halftime. I was really disappointed. I challenged the team that we weren't going to accept losing this ball game. We were coming out in the second half, going to do what we had to do to win it. Congratulations, great win. Back upstairs. Well, that motion with R.C. Slocum. You saw Randy McCown with the tears in his eyes. A game. It's Wisconsin where the fans stay for fifth quarter. I think they may institute that here in College Station today. These fans don't want to leave. Here in Texas, they call him 41. We call him Mr. President. George Bush addressing the troops as they salute the former president and the Aggies of Texas A&M getting ready to address the number two team in the country. Under R.C. Slocum in 14 years, they've won 86% of their games here at Kyle Field. They hope that they can improve that percentage today, but what a task at hand they have. The number two ranked team in the country, the number one ranked team in the BCS poll, the Oklahoma Sooners, one of the remaining undefeateds in here at Kyle Field, the home of the 12th man. Sunny and windy on third down conversions for the Aggies. Long, all day to throw. Deep middle, there it is, and it's put around the run. And he's out to the 45-yard line, first down. He's the main man, a career high last week, 154 yards through the air, and he just ripped off a 24-yard reception there. That's so, the <laughs> and I talked to him last night, he says, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Here's McNeil in trouble. Flush down in the pocket's going to get a first down on the ground, and then so out to about the 37-yard line. To go back, though, that's not the only thing Al Davis said to you other than, hi, Bob, how are you? <laughs> That's not the only thing he says. He says, well, how you doing on this? Down by number, looks down on his wristband for the corresponding play. Here comes a blitz. McNeil loads and goes. Complete. Got a man on the run. Terrence Murphy. He's gone. Touchdown, Aggies. Sixty-one yards, the longest play given up by the Oklahoma defense all year. We mentioned the strength of this AM offense was at wide receiver. And they have to respect the ability that he might run again, and that opens up things in the secondary. Blitz. Get rid of it, Reggie. And he tossed it. He got it complete at the 40. And Murphy was falling down, in fact, had fallen down. He still made the catch. Yeah, well, he had to throw this ball long before Murphy made his move, so he had just had to guess where he was going to be on that out route. And Corey Klein popped him as soon as he let go of it, so it's a first down. Aggie still with time, 20 seconds left in the half. Out of the shotgun again. McNeil waiting, waiting. Finally going deep, got Porter out there. Touchdown! What a catch! What a throw! The 12th man just woke up. Forty yard touchdown. 
At the last possible moment, McNeil let it go, and Porter made a sensational catch in the back of the end zone. Pegram to try to tie it. Excuse me, Pearson to try to tie it. And he barely tucks it in the right up right. Tie ball game. Let's take another look. Reggie McNeil has just come in and put a shot under this crowd. The 12th man, as you said, uh, Brad. Watch us. Everything's going to be covered. Now you should throw it now. Throw it now. No, I'm just saying, I'm saying around. Now he throws it over. Look at this. The two safeties are here. He's trying to get it over, both of them, to Porter from a flat-footed stance. Wow. We told you that Porter was going to be working down the middle early in the ball game. We said this. They wanted to get it to Porter over the middle. He down the middle of the field. Just that's a great throw. And a good catch. Jonathan Jackson's a guy that levels McNeil. Reggie's still looking sideways through legs and going touchdown. Yeah, I like that, huh? <laughs> that's a good look. Good job, Reggie. So it's backed up to the 22-yard line. Third down and 16. Not the spot he wanted to get in on the opening series of the third. He'll run a quarterback draw here. Right by the umpire. Into the open field. He's got a first down and then some. Reggie McNeil all the way to the 45-yard line. That said something Bob talked about. See your guards out in front of that play. First down at the 17-yard line. AM threatening to score on their opening possession of the third quarter. McNeil, pump oh, fake, pump and go, got a man, touchdown! Bethel Johnson! His first catch of the day couldn't have come at a better moment. They bit on the out and up. The pump fake was perfect, so was the throw. Touchdown, Aggie. It's an automatic first down at the 40. Might be a blitz coming from the secondary here from Oklahoma. There's the play action I talked okay. about. Here comes a deep ball. Murphy! Touchdown! Second touchdown for Murphy, one was 51, one was 40, and Rebel is loving it. The Aggies are back in front. A little play action. Extra point is good. Two touchdowns, 128 yards. Look at that average. When you got 51 and 40 for your two touchdowns, that average is going to be pretty good. Brandon Everidge fell down on that play. He sure did. Their leading receiver not playing today, Jamar Taylor. He said at the beginning of the game, they're just going to put somebody up in there. Bethel Johnson. Here's Bethel, straights working on him. The problem is, Everidge in the center of the field, number seven, falls down. Terrence Murphy, second touchdown. This time they trail by four. Nate Hibble, across the middle, Trent Smith on the run. The big tight end fumbled it, but I think he fell right back on top. I don't know if he got it or not. No, maybe not. A&M's got it. Randall Webb's got it. I thought Smith fell on his own fumble, but Randall Webb ripped it out of there. This is a tough place to play right here. Third there. quarter at the 30-yard line. Weber, draw play. No, kept by McNeil. Reggie on the run. Down to the 11-yard line. Sets up the field goal attempt. The try 24-yard kick. Pegram to try to extend the lead. Todd Pegram's kick yes. is good. He got it. And they're up what the level of intensity? They've given up scores late in ballgame. Today, they plan on not giving it back. 
Let's see if they can stop this one. Swanee, third and four. The hit put on Savage, Sammy Davis Jr. Now the spot is important. I think he's a little bit short. I think he's going to be a little short. And here's a big decision for Bob Stoops. Fourth down and a season. Fourth and five. You can barely hear yourself think at Kyle Field. Hibble in the flat. It's deflected. They drop him short of the first down. Ronald Jones with a hit of the day. Well, that one didn't count. And the penalty does. Oklahoma's got plenty of playmakers. The 22 Griffin catching the ball out of the backfield or running, and all these other receivers have great speed. People Savage and Fagan are the wideout. Smith the tight end, and Quentin Griffin joining Hibble in the backfield. Hibble to throw on first and 15. Deep sideline route. It's intercepted. Terrence Hill's got it. And the Aggies have got it. They'll win it. The dreams of a national championship might have just gone up in smoke. It'll be only the first loss for Oklahoma. And who knows, maybe the two remaining unbeatens, the two major remaining unbeatens might fall before it's all over. Who knows? But right now, it's going to be one of the sweetest and biggest upsets ever in the history of Aggie football. Three losses at home this season, but today they stand up. They said Kyle Field was a tough place to play, but they had lost three times here. Peoples doesn't go up to take the ball away from, from Keel, number 48. He should have went up and at least knocked the ball away. He didn't even make a play on the ball. R.C. Slocum, so many rumors and so many articles, and can he coach anymore? He's been here 14 years, but what have you done for me lately? I'll tell you what he's done for you lately. He's just pulled off a win over the number two team number in the country. He had three of his defensive starters out of the game. Three of his offensive starters out of the game. This might be the best birthday present he's ever had. 58 on Thursday, up by four on Saturday. The Aggies win it. There'll be some margaritas consumed in College Station tonight. <laughs> Two class coaches shake hands at midfield, and Reggie McNeil becomes a cult figure in his first year in the maroon uniform. We beat the number one team in the country. Quite a core today. On the field and off. Let's well, go down to Swanee with RC. Thank you, Brad. Coach, it's got to be a great feeling. Got to be one of the biggest victories for you here at Texas A&M. Well, it's really fun. We have the guys injured going this game. We stressed all week with the guys, it'd be the guys on the field that were playing that was important, not the ones who were hurt. I'm really proud of our football team that hung together. We've had some adversity. They never gave up. we got some fighters, some great characters. Is that the, the coaches, biggest difference in this team, Coach, the way they play? Just the attitude, what they brought to well, this game? We, we've had a bunch of things that's happened to us this year, but I'm, I'm really proud of the character of my coaches and my football team and our fans. This is a great setting here today. Stadium in Tuscaloosa on the campus of the University of Alabama fresh from their thrilling victory last week the top team in the country the Crimson Tide of Alabama and the Aggies of Texas A&M come to Tuscaloosa for the first time ever and they come as members of the Southeastern Conference, so many ties between these two football universities that we will develop throughout the afternoon. Take a look at the SEC West 
Alabama's on top, undefeated. If they win, they clinch the West, and they will head short of players. And today, that 12th man is C.J. Jones. Cyrus Jones out of the spread, handoff. Lacey gets a bit of a block, but a nice defensive job by Sean Porter, number 10. First. Good protection from McCarron. Good coverage by AM. McCarron wings it. Oh, this is Amari Cooper. Yeah, yeah. Starting job. He just had to learn to take care of the football. He's been doing a great job the last two weeks on the road. Ryan Swope is in the slot, number 25. Manziel, quarterback draw. Barrett Jones, he's the veteran up there. Here's Swope. Automatic first down. As Tom Ritter, our referee, and the official call is a face mask against Damian Square. Another running game to get off as well. Four wides, one setback. Manziel takes off again. Uh oh, stiff arm. Out of bounds at the 15 yard line. There's Manziel under center, second goal. Michael, injury prone, running back is in for the touchdown and for the 10th game this season. The Aggies score first. First down and 10. Aggies look like they might be coming. And off Lacey. Lacey with a first down. Nice. We're not crowding the box. They're challenging Alabama to run it. McCarron. Down across the middle. Picked off. Intercepted. That ends a long streak at Sean Porter. A streak of 290 plus comes to an end. It looked like two deep safeties, but they went late to the right. That is the first time McCarron has been intercepted since the game against Mississippi State at the 41 yard line. Manziel fakes the option, pulls up, drills it deep, man open, diving catch. That's Kendrick McNeil. What a great throw and catch. Snap from Patrick Lewis. Four-man Alabama rush. Got him. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, my gracious. Yep. How about that? Can't teach that, can you? And you can't defend that. When you have an opportunity to sack the quarterback, that's a touchdown every time. That's Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator. I think he thought what I thought. They Stop had. a playmaker like Manziel, you got to get him. And this time, Alabama, oh, oh look at almost a fumble of the ball. That's what kind of threw everybody off on the play. He almost loses it, recatches it, and keeps his wits about him. And that's why people have been asking me who he most reminds me of. He reminds me of a Ty Detmer back in his day when he used to make those scramble plays. Now the freshman star at the end of last week's come from behind win, and he gets nailed by Spencer Neely, number 99. And he ran right over. Nine sets up left side. Here's McCarron back, stunt blitz. McCarron has to get rid of it, and it's incomplete, and Alabama will punt. If the offense they think is audible. Blitz, Manziel, watch out. Boy, when he gets out of the pocket, no holds barred. Did it again, didn't he? Another blitz, handoff, Molina. Alabama's bringing blitz. Inside, it's caught by Thomas Johnson. Guess what? First and goal. There he goes across and run the ball. It's Michael. You calling it fourth no, down? No, fourth down. The runner did cross the plane, touchdown. Before he got across the line. And Alabama fans are going to go over 1,000 rushing and 2,000 passing. There's the pass. Beautiful. Kendrick McNeil. Empty backfield again, five wide. Three-man rush now for the Crimson Tide. Manziel drills it. He coverage and blitz, but they switched it up. Yep. Here's Manziel from the backside. 
Didn't get him the first time. Didn't get him the second time. My, and boy, my, do you my. pay for it. Aggies bringing four. McCarron going deep. Tipped incomplete. Beautiful play downfield by Howard Matthews. And off Lacey. Yep, they stopped it. They, they, were, they were anticipating the run there, weren't they? Third and two. They give it to Yeldon. Yep. He is stuffed. Gave, that, gave up on it a little bit too much. Formula to pressure him. Here comes the blitz again. C.J. Mosley coming. The catch is made by Mike Evans. That's his third catch. Left side. Catch made. Player loose. Thomas Johnson. He's 6'5", 218. Quarter blitz again. Manziel being chased. Finds Evans again all of a sudden. That combination worked ball up to 25. Ryan Swope, number 25. And he was just set a new career school record. He surpassed Jeff Fuller, who graduated last year. 234 career back to Tuscaloosa. And I don't think the Aggies are through celebrating. This was the scene as they went to the fourth quarter break. Up by three. Trying to maintain a perfect record on the road. And to do so, no snap. Got it. Little Hoyt Wilhelm on that ball. It's time for them to prove it. McCarron takes it to Lacey. Caught and dropped all the way back at the 19. Four-man Alabama rush. Manziel with a lot of time. Deep down the middle, and it's caught by Ryan Swope. Oh, did he thread that one. Well, I tell you, you got to give Swope so much credit. Yeldon is the running back. He goes left. Breaks into the secondary. It. And a fumble. Yep, and hanum has got that football. That's the second. Yards gets into the secondary. It's ripped loose on the play. I think Stephen Terrell, number 21, ripped it. Of everything going on in college football as soon as this one is in the book. Play action, Manziel. He's going to go deep right again, and he's got oh slow. Oh, gosh, what a pass. Oh, wow. A wheel route, and he put it like a baton in a track race. Put it right in front. Stunts defensively. Manziel comes left side. Ball wobbles. It's caught. Touchdown. Malcolm Kennedy. Retro freshman Johnny Manziel earned the starting quarterback job in fall camp. Got off to a brilliant start and has kept going. <laughs> Do they go onside kick? Do they dare give it back to AM again if they get a score? McCarron pulls up, intercepted. In front of Amari Cooper. No, they're going to say he was out of bounds. It was the chase. McCarron. Lacey follows Johnson. Didn't work very well then either. They do. McCarron pumps once. Gets a good block. Quanjo. Now he's got a freelance. McCarron can't find anybody open. He'll run down at the two-yard line. It'll be fourth and goal. 147 to go, fourth and goal. McCarron will throw it. It's intercepted. The Shazer Everett at the goal line. Alabama is really running their two point play. This is the one they saved. They were trying to pick, but Everett did not get picked on the play. Sneaking out this guy and trying to get him to the flat. Everett says no way. 
Gets outside, slides outside. You could see Cooper tried to pick him, but he couldn't get to him for the block or the return. Exactly. What's it look like? Can't tell. They fake it or they go with it. Ryan Epperson is the putter. Uh-oh. Who jumped? Fingers are being pointed in both directions. Oh, my. Neutral zone faction offside on the defense. The defense got into the neutral zone, causing the offense to fall start. Five-yard penalty, first down. The Alabama player stuttered it in the neutral zone. The AM player reacted to it. At least that's the call on the field. Right up here. You could see the play. That's the way it was called. Unnecessary play. Come on, man. Tyler Hayes. Number 36 is the guy that tried to do too much. And did Johnny Football put himself in position to be a Heisman Trophy winner? The dream of defending probably has died for Alabama. The Aggies are still beaten on the road in their first season. They really bought into what the new coaching staff. It's harder on those guys, and they're doing a great job of leading. I'm just, I'm happy for them. You know, they came to Texas A&M, and, and who would have thought we'd be playing Alabama in their senior year, the number one team in the country, and the way they played today, they led us and. I, I couldn't be happier for this team. Uh, we have to ask you about Johnny Manziel. He continues to amaze you, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, he, no moment's too big for him. Uh, it, it gives us, it gives our, our players a sense that, you know, we can score from anywhere and, and we can get, win the games. And I think that's a, a contagious feeling. I, like I said, these guys played their hearts out. What a football Congratulations game. Congratulations and welcome to the SEC. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Burn. First time the Aggies have ever played in Tuscaloosa. Bear Bryant coached at both schools. So did Gene Stallings. And I'm thinking right now the 27 men who made the trip, all of whom played for Bear Bryant at Texas A&M. And they were honored before this game began. What this trip must mean to them. And as good as Johnny Manziel play, remember that defense, three turnovers that they forced in this football game and a goal line stand of McCarran in this ball game. Texas A&M wins again on the road in one of the most inhospitable places in the country. They win at Alabama. For Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long. Game one of our doubleheader in the SEC West, home of three of the top five ranked teams in all of college football. Mississippi State atop the SEC. Allen play action on second down, completes over the middle. Malcolm Kennedy goes rolling inside the 20. Touchdown, Texas A&M. A 60-yard completion, Kyle Allen to Malcolm Kennedy. How about that? From the true freshman, his first SEC touchdown pass goes for 60. That's exactly what they need to happen. That's just a break in coverage, miscommunication once again. That's been the problem. To begin the day for Nick Marshall and Auburn. The SEC's leading rusher, Cameron Artis Payne, fumbles the football, and the Aggies recover. Floyd Raven gets the fumble recovery. A touchdown for the Two offense. To be able to take advantage of a defense that's attacking now. Allen pumps, slant, cut. That's Reynolds. Touchdown, Texas A&M. 
This one goes for 36. Yigum. A pair of touchdown passes for Kyle Allen, and it is a two-touchdown lead for the Aggies at Auburn. I thought Kyle Allen had Ricky Seals-Jones backside, but this time he throws it up to Josh Reynolds on a perfectly placed back shoulder. Allen out of the shotgun. Play action over the middle, complete, short of the first down. It's Malcolm Kennedy on the ground. Allen, quick hitter this time to Josh Reynolds at the 30. There was heavy pressure. On third and eight, complete to convert again. Reynolds makes the catch near midfield. First and 10 from the 50. Andy Lodge shaking into Auburn territory. Trey Williams, who did not play last week. Oh, and see if they can take advantage of that mismatch. Allen play action over the middle. Seals Jones again. End zone again. Touchdown, Texas A&M. The third touchdown pass of the first half from Kyle Allen. This one goes to Ricky Seals Jones, 23 yards. Well, here's Ricky Seal Jones at the number three position. He gets in here and finds the hole inside the defense. You see Chris Frost there getting lost. Just a great job of Seals. Duke Williams out of the game. Brandon Williams shaking his way across. The clock is back working here. Under 11 to go in the second quarter. Brandon Williams right up the gut. Williams gashes his way to the seven. First and goal, Texas Did an excellent job on that last play. That offensive line shuffled around, but got a hat on a hat, and have Texas A&M knocking on the door once again. Pressure up the middle. Allen, slant, caught, touchdown. TD pass number four for Kyle Allen. This one goes to Josh Reynolds. Marshall hands off, hit in the backfield. Thomas can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Brought down by On third and goal, Marshall pumps, pressure, slides back at the 15. Alonzo Williams gets to Marshall. First takeaway from the Aggies today. Marshall keeps it on the fake on first down. Garrett is not faked. He rides down Nick Marshall back at the 40. That is Miles Garrett. Rarely see Auburn go this slow. Mid 20, Marshall pulls it, pressured in the backfield, spinning away. Marshall dropped back at the 32. Everett leads the way on Nick Marshall. 41 yard field goal attempt coming from Daniel Carlson. What? Scooped up by the Aggies. Texas AM to Shazer. Everett will take it back. Touchdown, Texas A&M. A blocked field goal results in a 65-yard return from Everett. And what a way to end the first half for the Aggies. This team, starting a year ago against Texas A&M, felt lucky. And once again, who is it? It's Shot Miles Moore, Garrett, the true Texas freshman, a. coming That's up, making quarter. another huge play for the Aggies. PAT makes it 35-17. The Aggies, a huge road underdog at Jordan-Hare Stadium, where Auburn has won 14 straight. And yet it's Kyle Allen, the freshman quarterback, who leads a 35-17 charge at the break. Number 15 is a pretty good player. Hey, Bobbles makes the catch, dragged down immediately, and the Auburn offense is headed in reverse the again. Instead of focusing on their execution. The first down marker is all the way at the 40-yard line. Marshall dropped, slips as he tries to find the edge right around the five. Draw, Williams shaking his way for a first down. Turning the corner, Williams sprints to near the 25. The draw on third and long, Trey Williams busts loose. And that was Edge pressure. 
Option. Carson. First down, Texas A&M. Shovel toss. That's Kennedy. Bottled up. Slips free. Inside the Auburn 30. Malcolm Kennedy on the shovel pitch. Takes it inside the 10. First and goal, Aggies. Unbelievable open field running on the speed sweep by Texas A&M that time. Malcolm Kennedy. 38-24 the new score. So Auburn holds the Aggies out. From Auburn. Allen inside gives. Slipping through the Auburn D. Trey Williams takes it to near the 20. It just hasn't been here in the second half. Ben Compton in at tight end. Brandon Williams on the toss. Williams gets 10. So the Aggies starting to go to the ground game, which is what they used last week against Louisiana. That hash. Allen, play action to the slot. It's Reynolds who has another first down inside the Auburn 40. Get the snap off. Play action. Allen on the roll. Caught. There's Speedy Noyle inside the 20. His first catch of the day takes the Aggies inside the 15. Lambo boots it through. We're back to a two-score game. 41. Inside again here. Second and goal. Artis Payne. Fumble. Loose ball. Auburn's on top. Artis Payne got back on top of the fumbled exchange between Marshall and the running back. And now we'll check. Artis Payne on top for a moment. Texas A&M. With 2.37, the Aggies have a three-point lead in the football. Lose and... this game because that's how you get yourself beat. I think they need to come after it. The ball got snapped over. Loose ball. Did Auburn get on top? Unquestioned leader of that offensive line in the offense. Bad communication, snaps the ball when quarterback Nick Marshall was trying to check out of a uh, The last couple of weeks, and, and we can really, uh, you know, based on what happened in the middle of the season, for these guys to come out and play the way they did tonight, I couldn't be proud of this coaching staff and these kids. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you. For the third time under Kevin Sumlin, the Aggies of Texas A&M go on the road. Aaron Taylor and Jamie Erdahl, this is Carter Blackburn. The fourth ranked team in the country visits Bryan College Station to face number 21 Texas A&M. As we welcome you to the SEC on ESPN, about 30,000 fans expected today at Kyle Field. To beat a team like Florida, we gotta have big plays. Kellen has to be more sharp. He's facing pressure here and delivers a strike. They've got a pretty good tight end as well. Jalen Weidermeyer, that's his 11th catch of the season, and he moves the chains on a... Out of the pistol here on first down at the 39-yard line, play fake for Mott. And taking a shot here, Inside the 20, it's caught. They get one of those big plays. Caleb Chapman with single coverage pulls it in for 48 yards. They've been waiting for that all year from Mond, and he finally delivers. Look at the safeties here who are just going to run, which allows the post over the top. Look how hard these safeties collapse on the play action fake, which gives you one on one on the outside to Chapman and a beautiful throw. We talked about the big Smith at running back. That's the two best pass catching options at this point on the same side of the field. So I would imagine Mon's eyes start there. Mon zips a pass to the end zone for the touchdown. Chase Lane was wide open. What a response by Mon to the Aggies. Like he did right there. 
Kellen Mond, 7 of 8, over 100 yards and a touchdown. Basing pressure here, but gets rid of the pass. And wide open is Smith in Florida territory. Anaya Smith able to find an open seam in the secondary, and it's a 30-yard gain. They go empty, flexing Anaya Smith out top of your screen. Mond looking the other way, and has Chapman inside the 10, first down. Caleb Chapman had five catches all year coming into this game. He has four in the first half on six targets. On third and goal, Mon looks. Chapman got another one. Touchdown. Caleb Chapman has become the favorite target today of Kellen Mon. Haven't had a stop on third down yet. Another run play, and Spiller's got room across midfield. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line, a 17-yard run for Isaiah Spiller. Came in averaging eight yards a pop. I'm calling the defense. And here they come. It's picked up. Mon's pass is caught. That was a great grab at the 30-yard line by Chase Lang to pick up the first down. And you could easily send it out there if you didn't. And Seth Small knocks it through to end the first half, but kind of ugly clock management. Don't know again if that's on the players or the coaching staff there, but poor use of the timeouts. They do get three. 21-17, number four Florida leading at 21st ranked. Tech fireworks here in the first 30 minutes. Caleb Chapman had 80 receiving yards and six catches and a touchdown. Wide open out of the backfield is Spiller, and Florida's defensive issues continue. All the way to the 43 for 18 yards. Let's check with Holly Rowe. 18 yard line out of the pistol. On will hand it off to Spiller. Ton of room off the left edge. Out past the 25. So a game of 13 on the play. Tomorrow. Nine minutes to play here in the third. Tenth carry of the day for Spiller. And again, a ton of running room as he runs over a defender. Man, we've seen that twice out of Isaiah Spiller. Gate of 23. How about this right side of the offensive line? I mean, we're talking about just an absolute gash. These guys on the right side between Carson Green, South of Carroll's own, by the way, and Jared Hawker have done a fantastic job of moving some of these Florida Gators off the spot. South of Carroll, man. Come on, Dragons. Here he is again, getting the perimeter past the 40. Boy, he is not afraid. Look at him lower the shoulder and a big hitter in Sean Davis. Man, Isaiah Spiller taking names here. here as the game goes along. Just going to keep pounding in here. This is Smith. And he's got a first down to the 24-yard line. At over 100 yards week one against Vandy. Play fake. First pass of the drive. Mon dumps it off. Wide open. Weiermeyer to the five. Comes up a yard short of the line to gain, but they're inside. The Florida five-yard line. Challenge that big group up front. The Aggies. And they will pound it. First down. Touchdown. Isaiah Spiller. <laughs> like five million. Trask pumps in trouble, and down he goes. They finally get to him. Bobby Brown was there. So was Tyree Johnson. The third down and five here for Kellen Mond. Two touchdowns on the day. Pressure coming. Blitz has picked up the pass. One-handed catch. Weidermeyer stabbed it, and that was a bullet from the quarterback in Weidermeyer with a beautiful grab. Well, let's take a better look at that from the AT&T Skycam. Someone check his gloves. Is there some Velcro on those gloves? My goodness. And Kagan Baldry in here with Spiller on fourth and two. Spiller cuts it back, has a first down, and there! He's got a touchdown! A hundred.
140 rushing yards and two touchdowns for Isaiah Spiller. Let's take a look at that touchdown from the AT&T 5G Skycam. I just love this little wrap concept. It's a little bend concept. See Spiller on fourth and short trying to run to the right side of the offensive line, and then he follows those reversers back around to the left to create some leverage there on the edges of the defense. That's a really nice... On his 25-yard line, and a hand it off. Spiller breaks a tackle at the 30, but stumbles. Still got seven yards on against a top five ranked team. On to the air again. In traffic. Catch made by Chapman at the 49 for a first down. That was an excellent throw. Plenty of time here for AM, and plus that Florida defense got to be tired as often has been on the field here in the second half. several defenders. Play action here for Mon, moving to his right, looking deep, got a receiver! the defender 51 yards all right this is really nicely done here you're gonna see Chapman who goes over the top but watch the safety really bite on this over route see the safety he'll stay down which allows Chapman over the top and one-on-one -on -one. balls a little late and underthrown but Chapman does a great job going up and making the play we talked about it at the beginning of the game the biggest thing for Kellen Mond is he's got to hit those big plays down the field. If they're going to be successful and this offense is going to hit its stride, it's got to be down the field. He's got to connect on those. He's done so several times today, and another beautiful throw there to Chapman, who goes up and makes an excellent play. Sophomore from Friends Woods is with Georgia. Raiders trying to get to 3-0. They'll run it here on second and 10. Davis cuts back, but he's thrown down and fumbled the ball, and it's picked up by Leal. Buddy Johnson forced the fumble. Leal gives a and its first takeaway of the game. <laughs> Texas A&M will have it in Florida territory. The kind of plays you have to make to beat a top five team, and A&M is doing that here in the second half. This is what Jimbo Fisher told us. He kept pointing out, we got to hit on the long pass plays. We've got to break tackles when we run the ball. We've got to create turnovers. We can't beat Florida if we don't do those things. They've done all of those things here in the fourth. They have. They made the play, too. I mean, it's a great job by Buddy Johnson. Man, you got to feel for Malik Davis. He's had such a nice game today. Good rust. Here's a pitch to Spiller out in space. Hurdles a defender. Helmet goes flying. Close to a first down is the running back, Spiller. We'll see if they give it to him here to try to milk some clock. Yep, straight ahead, inside the 35. Down to the 33. Approaching a minute to go, third down and eight. Mon will throw, and it's caught over the middle for a first down and more inside the 20. Chase Lane gets the first down and more. And the Aggies in business here late at home against number four. Third down and kick it on fourth. He'll give it to Spiller. And he cuts it back inside the 15 and brought down inside the 10. So the clock will stop here to get rid of the chains on first and goal. This is also a spot, too. If you're Kellen Mond, talk to your guys. Your size has been questioned. And he delivered one of the best performances of his career. I mean, bar none. So clutch, so efficient, so in control yep. to give this team a chance. Congratulations to that young man for giving them a chance. And now, just a short field goal away. 
from a massive win for Jimbo Fisher in this Aggie program. That's why the game. First things first, 26 yard try for Seth Small to win the game for Texas A&M. can take a breath. Jimbo Fisher has done it. Beat a top five team. And hands Florida its first loss of the season. First top five home win in 18 years for Texas A&M as a program. Because you got to learn to win these. You got to learn to not play the scoreboard and play every play. Relentless competitor, win your space. The scoreboard takes care of itself. And I can't say enough. People doubt them. And we ain't done. We deserve some of it. But we can. We had a very good football team and a heck of a program. You speak about doubt. There was a moment where things were unraveling for your group with penalties and dumb mistakes. How did they get it back together and finish so well? Did a good job. Weren't unraveling. Just having impatience. You can't be impatient. You got to play this game, though. You can't cheat the game. The game makes you play it, and we played it today. Kellen Mond has taken his fair share of criticism. How do you describe that young man's performance? And I'm going to tell you, hey, he's had some mistakes. Every quarterback does. Let me tell you something. He's the reason we're winning football games, and there's a lot of these guys. It's been awesome, man. It's been awesome. Coach, your defense had to get some crucial stops against a very high-powered offense. How important was that for your defense? Listen, they've been, they gave a lot of plays up, but they got that turnover when they had to. Coach said that's your game, baby. How hard was it to earn this moment a top five win for you today, Kellen? I've never seen you play better. Uh, it was big time. Uh, but, you know, we, we had our ups and downs this game, and but I just told everyone to keep their composure and uh, continue to fight. And the defense was, you know, able to come up with a big time stop uh, to give us the ball back. So. Um, I mean, it's a full team win playing full four quarters. You are so accurate today. You made big throws, none bigger than to Chapman there in that fourth quarter. How were you so accurate today? It just goes back to practice and the way I train. And, um, you know, I'm very hard on myself in the way that I, I prepare myself. And, um, you know, my guys push me, my coaches push me, and um, we're able to come out and have a big win. Kellen, how great was this win? Listen to the crowd and enjoy it as you walk off. Thank you. Thank you. And let's take a look at today's more driven moment brought to you by Goodyear. The takeaway by the Aggie defense, Buddy Johnson forcing the fumble. Malik Davis coughing it up here. Big hit by Johnson, the senior from Dallas. And then the short field goal after AM moved it down the field. And the Gatorade bath for Jimbo's first win against a top five team. Here at AM. What a performance by Kellen Mond, a guy making his 37th start, plays one of the best games of his career. College football scoreboard is coming up next, then it's Arkansas and Auburn. For Holly Rowe, Greg McElroy, our entire crew, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Texas AM with the Aggies.